I just made this dry tomato soup mix. Doesn't look dry right now because I added water to it. But in this video, we're gonna trail test a dry tomato soup mix that weighs almost nothing and is perfect for a hearty meal for your long haul backpacking trips. Let's get cooking. It's super interesting that tomato powder kind of globs up. I do like the overall viscosity and the body of this. Comparing it to round one, look at how much more body that has. Because we're gonna wake it up. Oh, baby. Now that looks like a trail meal to get excited for. Hey, Chef Corso, Outdoor Eats. I'm here to put you on the path to amazing meals on your outdoor treks. And I am BLM camping here just outside of Silverton, Colorado. And what we're gonna do in this video is we are gonna test a brand new recipe for you guys. And what we are testing, we are testing a dry tomato soup recipe. Yeah, a dry tomato soup mix that all you have to do is add water and you're gonna get a really, really tasty tomato soup when it's time to cook it up on the trail. So I've never made this recipe before. I've been thinking about this recipe for a, a while actually. And it does have a special ingredient that, that you need for this and that's dry tomato powder. Dry tomato powder isn't everywhere. I had to do a special order for this, but it is a key component to making a tomato soup. The challenge for this recipe is dialing in the components to get the perfect, perfect mix of tomato, of onion, of garlic, of other supporting flavors, and to find the correct ratio of water to add to our mix and our camp pot to make a perfect, perfect bowl of warm tomato soup. Again, I've never tested this recipe, so you and me are gonna test the recipe as many times as we have to in order to get it perfect. I don't think I'm gonna get it right on the first try, but we're gonna find out. Wanted to move this down off the table so you guys can see what it's looking like as we are starting to simmer up. That it's super interesting that tomato powder kind of globs up. But I'm thinking that as we start to cook, it's gonna start to rehydrate and dissipate. Oh boy, we are, we are bubbling. Oh yeah, give me that. Adjusting our heat here, nice little simmer. And let's see how all these uh, ingredients come together. Wow. Nice, really nice deep red color. We've been simmering for about a minute or two and our tomato powder has definitely dissipated and hydrated. French's fried onions are starting to break down a little bit. Really nice color. It's a little thin, but I think I can fix that with round two, but let's give this a try. All right, here we go. Tomato soup mix, round one. Hmm. It's not bad. What I'm tasting here though, it's pretty tart. And I don't necessarily want my tomato soup to be tart. It does need to have a little bit of acidity going on. We've got a good amount of flavor of onion and garlic. So I don't think that needs to change for round two. I think I'm gonna delete the Worcestershire sauce powder. Cause it seems like this tomato powder actually has enough acidity already. There is a nice lingering level of sweetness, which is good too. Overall, 
solid round one. So for round two, what I'd like to see here is I'd like to see a little bit less acidity. I'd like to see a little bit more creaminess, a little bit more thick thickness. It needs to thicken up a little bit somehow. And I want a little bit more body and depth of flavor. I think I have an ingredient that's gonna help us out with that. Let's hit it for round two. tomato soup mix test round two. So we are gonna take away the Worcestershire sauce powder and to give us a little bit of flavor body, I'm gonna try to crush up some Parmesan crisps, which are really great ingredient to pack along to give us a little bit of backbone. And you know, I want a little bit of thickness too. So here's some pita chips and I'm gonna see if I can crush those up and they're gonna soak up some of that moisture to see if we can get a little bit thicker. But the other things that I'm thinking to add to this round two, I'm gonna check the old spice box here, is, you know, we don't have any pepper, so we could easily add a little bit of pepper, but I think I wanna try some Old Bay seasoning, so it has a little bit of zip in there. It also has some celery seed, and we don't have any celery from our mirepoix, so I'm gonna see if just a little bit of a dash of Old Bay can help us achieve some really nice flavor. And then looking in here too, uh, got some arrowroot powder. So this is a nice thickener. You can also try some cornstarch or a little bit of flour. I would you know, recommend arrowroot or cornstarch. Um, just I prefer the viscosity that it provides. But let's see what happens when we make a recipe with these ingredients for round two. As this is coming up to a simmer, any of your thickening agents that you use, whether that's cornstarch, flour, arrowroot, or any of the other ones, is they do not reach their full thickening power or full thickening potential until they reach a simmer. So it's really important that you get your pot up to a nice simmer to really see how thick that thickener is making your dish before you start to add more. So I can already tell with our additional ingredients in here that we're gonna need a little bit more water than round one. Round one, we had five ounces. I think I'm gonna add two ounces more of water for here and see how that looks. Wow. Comparing it to round one, look at how much more body that has. Definitely thicker and definitely more of a consistency that I'm looking for when I'm eating tomato soup. Got those French's fried onions in there that are running around. Those little bit of the bigger chunks of the pita chips. This is what round two looks like. Very similar color. We've got some more action going on in there. You know, if you don't want to use pita chips, you could probably try just some bread crumbs or some old bread as well. But I had pita chips because I was snacking on those on the trail anyway. Wanted to see if that could work. Let's give this a try. All right, round two, test. Smells good. Mm. Wow. What I'm tasting here in comparison to round one is that tartness that I didn't want is gone. So that's very, very good. It still is on a little bit of the acidic side, but that's okay. 
I do like the overall viscosity in the body of this. Yep, looks like a little bit thicker tomato soup. The air root powder has thickened nicely. You know, I can't taste too much of the Old Bay seasoning. Not too spicy. You know, as I'm tested this for the second time here, hmm, let's see, I think about the, that, those Parmesan crisps. Frankly, I don't want to taste a big mouthful of Parmesan. I just want it to linger and live in here in harmony with everything else. And that's pretty much what I'm tasting. Mm. Wow, that's pretty good. So what I would like, because I'd like to make another round of this for round three, and then I think we can get it perfect. I still want a little bit more creaminess. And hopefully that can counteract a little bit of that that acidic note that I'm tasting. And I would like a little bit more garlic and a little bit more onion and a little bit more obey in there just for a little bit more flavor punch. That's me. As I'm tasting this too, I'm getting really a, a, a nice hankering for a, a grilled cheese sandwich too because it's, it's tomato soup. Gotta have some grilled cheese with it. But how do you make a grilled cheese sandwich with a dinky camp pot like this where a piece of bread doesn't fit in it? Well, I think I might have a solution for that too after round three. This is what round three looks like. Very similar to round three. But let's see if we're able to just perfectly dial in our flavors and our viscosity. And yeah guys, it's raining now. Thanks Colorado for your late afternoon thunderstorms. Doesn't mother nature know that I'm trying to make tomato soup for you guys? Ah, tough times on the trail. All right, <laughs> test in round three. Mmm, a little bit more milk powder, even things out nicely. Got a little bit more garlicky flavor and a little bit more of that zing from the Old Bay. I enjoy that. Mmm. You know, I could even go for a little bit more milk powder, but I think for all you guys out there, I'll let you guys decide if you want to add more, but I think this is a really good point and I think we've dialed in our flavors for our tomato soup mix. Now, as I just teased you a little bit, is I want some grilled cheese, damn it. Because I'm an American and grilled cheese goes with tomato soup. It's just what you need. But how do you make a grilled cheese sandwich when the piece of bread doesn't fit in this thing? Well, I am gonna show you. And the answer is deconstructing it. So we are gonna make some grilled cheese croutons. Yes, let's do it. All right, for our grilled cheese croutons, we need three things. We need oil, easy packing. We need cheese, pre-grated is just fine. And we need some old bread. Yes, this is very old and you know, it's fine if it's been sitting there for two or three days on the trail and it's stale because we're gonna wake it up and we want it a little bit crunchy. And you know, again, if it's stale, it's gonna be fine. Yep, definitely stale. Yep, the butt here is like rock hard. But hey, that's completely okay. I'm hiking, I need calories, and I need to use this up. Mmm. Bread is good. But what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this up into chunks, into rustic little croutons, put it in our camp pot, add it with oil, 
and toast it up for our grilled cheese croutons. Yeah. Cleaned out my camp pot. It's a nice hiker clean here. I transferred my soup to a bowl. Get my pot on there. Just gonna rip up my bread and throw it right in there. We're just gonna to start to toast up our bread here into croutons on a nice medium, medium low heat. Make sure you get enough oil in there so it coats our bread. Oh yeah, toasted bread. Toast is not bread, bread is not toast, folks. You need to toast it and wake it up to get those really yummy flavors and textures on there. If you're packing along a skillet, you could also do it in there as well. But we're just making this one pot, one bowl meal. There we go. Nice. So once we get all toasted, and just, oh my God. In just a few seconds, you've got grilled cheesy croutons, toasted bread, melted cheese. What more could you want? That's looking pretty darn good. Let's put that on our soup. Oh, babe. Now that looks like a trail meal to get excited for. All right, well, let's, let's give this a try thunder clapping over here with our grilled cheese croutons. Mm. Big cheesy bite. That's what you want, folks. Oh, man. Tomato soup tastes even better as it's been sitting there for a few minutes while I made my grilled cheese croutons. But this is the way that you can have grilled cheese and tomato soup on the trail. You could make this like six, seven days in. That bread's gonna be nice and stale by then. All your stuff is dry. All you need to do is add water. So, so good. Hey, thanks for coming along for trail testing our recipe here today, our tomato soup mix, our dry tomato soup mix. Here is the final recipe. So what I did is I doubled all of the amounts that I did here on the trail because this is like one nice portion, but yeah, you know, I'm gonna be pretty hungry when it comes meal time. And you know, you can always just have one small portion. You could have one nice big portion, it's up to you, but wanna be able to give you a nice solid portion over here to be able to fill you up nice. But get out there, cook something amazing somewhere awesome. Even if it's raining, even if it's lightning, I don't know, get out there, boca boca. And then it started hailing. Good thing I cooked my soup.